I need your help. Have you ever been to Baalbag? Raise your hands if you have. Okay, that's around half of us. Did you hire a local guide? Again? Ooh. Did you visit the old souk and have some siha baalbakiyya? Okay, that's my not. You missed out on that siha. Did you stay the night in Balbag? Of course not. Obviously not. So, what was your impact on the place you visited? Imagine you get invited to a friend's house for the first time for dinner. You go there empty handed, you stay on your phone the whole night, you don't touch any of the food you prepared, you wash your hands, and you leave without saying thank you. This is the exact thing you did if you just visited the temples in Baalbak. Throughout this talk, we will learn how each one of us can be a responsible tourist and incur a positive impact on any place he visits. We all love to, love to travel. Travel is such a deep experience that, we, that makes us crave for more and more. When we travel, we experience something new. We try new food, we meet new people, we learn about new experiences, and it all makes us want, want to do it more and more. And this is why one in 10 jobs globally is in the travel industry. Tourism has made so many places huge destinations, bringing in millions of dollars in income to the locals and to the government, and developing these places from infrastructure to huge hotel compounds and luxury services. In numbers, tourism is such a huge industry that it accounts to 1.6 trillion dollars in revenue and 1.3 billion arrivals every year and it's ever-growing. But, unfortunately, tourism is a sword with two sharp edges. Uncontrolled and unmanaged, it starts to negatively impact its own destination. Did you know that at any, t at any moment in time, there are more tourists in Venice than there are actual locals? Venice is losing its culture because it's now solely dedicated to tourists. Venetians are uh, aren't finding enough lodging because every empty building and old house is being turned into a hostel, a guest house, or an Airbnb. Maya Beach in Thailand, one of the most beautiful beaches on Earth, is now temporarily closed because of over-tourism. What was once a paradise has been turned into a place full of garbage because of over-tourism. 77% of the corals have died in that area. And also in India, Elephants are being brutally domesticated, tusks cut and sold to become $5 tourist rides. Let's go to Lebanon now, our beloved country. What's our situation in tourism? Our country is a beautiful country. It's mentioned 71 times in the Bible, home of many civilizations over thousands and thousands of years. But tourism has been solely focused on the capital and coastal cities, and we need to shift this trend to our rural areas. As Lebanese wanderers, we believe that the big, a big part of our culture lies in our rural areas. All our traditions, crafts, authentic food and values we learn from our villages. But yet, these villages are facing a big problem. Who among us, amongst us still lives in his hometown? OK, that, that's around like 20%. Uh, this is the problem, me and you. We just don't live there anymore. These places are losing us, are losing their people, and in turn, they're losing what's, what's valuable in them. They're losing the culture, they're losing the traditions, and the recipes that we once loved are dying with our elders. But it's not too late to change this. Thanks to the help of many organizations over the, year, over the years, like the Ministry of Tourism, the Lebanon Mountain Trail, the Shoof Reserve, and many others, Rural tourism now is now trending in Lebanon. The youth are very interested to discover new places, new places nearby. Duma, have you been to Duma? Okay, Duma's old souk is back to life because of you guys. Aura, a village that used to be solely dependent on apple, apple growing, is now witnessing a huge change. People who worked in Beirut are now moving back to the village and turning it into an outdoor, an outdoor destination. This is beautiful. The Shuv Biosphere Reserve gets 100,000 visitors per year, and this is amazing. And everyone is out on a road trip in the weekend, taking pride in all the new Instagram posts they have achieved. Even someone on Instagram joked 
that you're not Lebanese if you didn't post a picture doing rakat, meaning snowshoeing. And it, and it blew my mind because three or four years ago, three or four years ago, snowshoeing was a sport almost not heard of. And now people are joking about how trending it is. But also, again, this, this witnesses damage as well. After a small promotion we did to Palm Island and Tripoli, the, uh, the island is 20 minutes away, uh, it's a nature reserve open to tourists only three months per year. It witnessed a huge growth in the number of tourists, and it left the island partially damaged and full of garbage. This is the exact time where sustainable tourism should be introduced. It is at the start of a trend where we have the power to shift this trend into being a success rather than being a chaos and destruct. By definition, sustainable tourism is any act involved in tourism that takes in mind a positive impact on culture, environment, and economy of a certain area, while conserving it to future generations and ensuring the sustainable development of any place. It's, it's, a, it's a huge concept that requires effort from the government, making laws that affect the whole industry, laws that affect the tour operators, the municipalities, the local businesses, and us, the tourists. But being a responsible tourist is only a matter of willpower. It's only a matter of decision. And it can make a change. Let's imagine we want to go somewhere. We want to go hiking to Hadas al -Jibbe. We find this tour online, me and you, and it says, bus ride, from, bus ride from Beirut, breakfast on the highway, picnic in the forest, for an okay price. And you say, yalla, let's go. We gather a group of friends and we hit the bus, all excited for this trip. As we, as we pass by the highway, we, we stop on this chain bakery, get a small get a small breakfast and then st stop by the shopping center and get some snacks and sandwiches for our picnic. We reach the forest, the beautiful forest, and we don't need the local guide because the organizers know the trail very well. And as we reach our lunch spot in the beautiful shade of cedar trees, we have our picnic and we, reali we realize that there are no garbage bins around. And of course, who would get an extra garbage bag with him? Who does that? You leave thinking, well, what a great day we have. What have you given back to this place you've just visited? You've just given back an Instagram post that the thousand-year-old cedar tree you left your sandwich wrap under is really grateful for. So how could this trip, the same trip, with the same amount of fun we had and the same amount of money we spent, bring a positive impact on the local community? Let's start with breakfast on the highway. Uh, let's start with breakfast in the village. Rather than stopping on the highway, there's this small shop in the village uh, that, that makes this amazing breakfast, and probably for a cheaper price. And as you go in, the people will, will shout, Ahala Barabbag! Who wouldn't want that, you know? <laughs> and then, try hiring a local guide. If you hire a local guide, some of you will listen and some of you will not. But divided upon a big group, it will be a minimal per person. And I'm sure some of you will want to learn something new about this place. Maybe the native plants that go, grow only in this forest or the history of this village. When you need to get your water, there's this small shop in the village that sells the same water bottle that you will find at this huge shopping center on the highway. And for the same price, I promise. Why not get it from there? You'll be supporting a small family. And when when having lunch, you're like one hour away or two hours away from Beirut and they make this authentic macaroon of tomb dish and the guest house is ready to welcome you. Have some lunch at the guest house. So after this day, you would have left with a richer experience from interacting with the local and you would leave the village knowing that your money is circulating in the local community. So the same trip, the same amount of money spent, you've had a richer experience for yourself and you've made more impact on the local community. This is how you, in these simple steps, can be a responsible tourist. When booking these kinds of trips online, ask your tour operator about these. You know, if we ask them once and once again about having lunch in the forest, about having local guides, about sustainable practices, they will change their strategies so themselves will start working under sustainable ideologies. When sleeping in a place, Try, try to sleep at local guest houses rather than huge hotels. 
And, in, and if, you, if you have to sleep at huge hotels and you need the luxury, ask the hotels if they employ locals. Where they get their products from? How they treat their waste? And make sure that the hotel knows that these things have affected your decision. Always spend your money at the local small businesses rather than big corporations. Um, ask the locals to hand you water in glass bottles rather than uh, glass uh, rather than plastic bottles. You have no idea how much you, a tourist, can, can help them learn. The locals learn so much from us, but we have no idea how much we affect them. These little things can make a change. Refuse to go to places that have been exploited by unruly practices and always, always think about the locals when you, when you do anything. This is a, are simple, these are simple steps and part of a bigger approach to sustainable development. And it's a, it's a huge process, but never underestimate your little actions, how much they can do. Let, let me leave you with this thought. A responsible tourist will create a responsible local, a responsible tour operator, a responsible municipality, and with time, a responsible government and a nationwide culture of sustainable ideologies. And next time you visit Balbag, I'm sure you know what to do now. Thank you. Thank you.